Come join Libby and Molly, the ladies of consignment chats, as we build a resourceful community of collaborative resellers. Hey, y'all. Welcome to episode 66 of C Chats. Libby, how you doing? Great. Are you ready for today? Oh, I'm ready to get real, baby. We are getting real. You, um, No, you can throw it out there. We are getting real today. And by real, y'all, I mean R-E-E-L with my friend, Erin. And I cannot wait for you to meet her. I cannot wait for you to learn from her. I know we've talked about getting ourselves in front of video so often in our community. And now we've got somebody we brought in to help us do just that and get comfortable and get real. Ready? I'm so excited for you guys to start. So if you haven't started, start here. If you have started with reels, guess what? We're going to learn a few trips, tips and tricks. We got it. Here we go, y'all. Let's go meet Aaron. All right, y'all. As promised, we brought in somebody very special today. And here she is. Her name is Aaron. Hey, Aaron. Hi, everybody. Thank you for having me. Uh, we're so thrilled to have you. So thrilled. So I'm going to go take a minute. I'm going to go into what I know about you because I've known you okay. now for a few years. Mm -hmm. And Erin has always impressed me. Erin has several hats that she wears. I think the first hat and the most important hat is mother of four girls. True. Thank you. Yes. It's oh, the wow. busiest four hat. Four girls. <laughs> Busy. Coffee, and, busiest, craziest hat out of all of them. Yes. And I always love, I love to mention that to our sea chatters because we have a lot of, um, a lot of members of our community who struggle mm -hmm. with the, how to get your time organized mm -hmm. and how can you be successful at all of that. And as they get to know you and hopefully start following you on your social media pages, mm -hmm. they'll see your life and how you do it, because I think you do a beautiful job. We're not going to get into that right now mm -hmm. with the time management, because we have many episodes on time management. <laughs> that could be days and days of content. <laughs> yes, but I love that. I think it's a way that our community will connect with you, because sure. a lot of them are wearing several hats and trying to do that. So mother of four girls in a blended family, mm -hmm. and she is also a co-host at Low Country Live, which is ABC um, network in Charleston. It is um, their lifestyle show. I think it's probably the top in Charleston, in my mm -hmm. mind anyway. I appreciate um, that. Also, yeah, what? I said, I appreciate that. Yes. yes. Thank, yes. thank you. <laughs> and she's also a licensed auctioneer in the state of South Carolina and raises literally millions, has raised millions for nonprofits in the state um, mm -hmm. since she's been involved in that. And I'm going to tell you the most recent, but first I want to say the really neat thing about Erin is I've actually worked with her on these levels. I have mm -hmm. been on her Low Country Live and been interviewed by her. Now I get to interview her. Okay. <laughs> We're just switching roles. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Although I guarantee you she's not as nervous as I was when I went on Low Country Live. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure the butterflies aren't quite there. And she also um, did an auctioneered for us for when I was working with the nonprofit and did mm -hmm. an event and was phenomenal to work with. But the last hat and the newest hat that she mm -hmm. wears is video coach. She's an entrepreneur mm -hmm. and is a video coach. And that is the main reason why we brought Erin to you. Because as you know, we've talked about getting ourselves out there and putting ourselves on camera. And we're all a little nervous about that. But I want to start, Erin, by asking you, how did you segue into video coaching how did that journey happen for you well I call myself the accidental entrepreneur because I feel like I just kind of stumbled into this and it's been wonderful and I'm that's I'm really excited to talk about videos because I feel like I'm walking proof of what videos can do for you and your business I'm not just teaching it I've lived it and my story goes back to you know, as you mentioned, I'm, I'm in television. I've been in TV for 20 years, but just like all of you listening or watching, you know, I, I hate seeing myself on camera. I know that sounds so weird, you know, like, but I never would go back and watch segments. I think we all have a level of self, you know, awkwardness that we watch ourselves and we critique everything. Yes. So I say that because I would be on TV you know, in my role as a TV host, and I would come home. And the last thing I would want to do is get on social media and make videos. 
it just wasn't my jam. Mm. Like I'm a mom, we've got four kids, I'm busy. I had no interest. I just didn't want to put myself out there in that way. And then COVID hits and I found myself in my bedroom, which is where I am right now, producing our lifestyle show over Zoom because we were just trying to stay afloat and stay you know, alive like everyone else. So when that happened, I started to receive a bunch of messages on Instagram, on email, on Facebook, all over people asking me what to do on camera. And it was really fascinating because the entire world was suddenly forced on video. And not only were we forced to run our business on video, but we were suddenly forced to like look good, sound professional, have a, a decent background or you know, put in another background so people couldn't see the chaos that was really happening. Yeah. So it just really came out of laziness on my part that I had so many people asking me what to do that I was like, you know what, I'm just, I'm going to make a video. And I was also really bored because you mentioned auctions. I had no auctions, nothing going on. Right. So I think my first, one of my first videos was how to zoom really simple. I didn't even talk to the camera. I just had music and I put text on it and I was shocked at how many responses I got. And to me, it was just really simple stuff like check your audio, have good lighting. So once that happened, I was like, huh, like, okay, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm on to something. And then the newspaper contacted me and they wanted a quote for a story about how to Zoom, et cetera. So then people were asking me about how to present on camera. So I made another video that was like, you know, how to be confident on camera. I thought it was really stupid. When I watch it now, it makes me cringe. I love it. I posted it. it. And the I same thing it. happened. All these, my Instagram page before this was dead. You know, I had pictures of like my kids, cute outfits, but not a lot of engagement. It just no strategy or thought into it. Mm -hmm. So I posted my second video and I had like tons of engagement and all these comments. So suddenly I was like, I feel like I'm, I'm kind of onto something. So again, out of my boredom during COVID, I just started making more videos. And I started to find that creative spark that I had had as a child, probably and lost during years of like TV polish and professionalism. And I'd been doing it maybe one to two months. And I got my first person reach out to me. I think, let me think the first one was in Virginia and he was like, I'd love to work with you. How much? I had no, I had no idea. Like how, how much for what, like what Thanks service great. am I offering? So very quickly I decided to put a price tag on stuff and get things organized. And since then I've had, you know, more than a hundred students um, that have gone through my course, which is called Let's Get Real. I've had hundreds go through, you know, different one-on-one -on -one coaching altogether. I've trained organizations, I've trained politicians, and it just started from doing simple videos in my bedroom. And I think that's what, yes, I'm on camera, but I think all of us have like that something to share. And if you're willing to put yourself out there and start sharing it, like magic happens. And I believe in this so much because I see it with my students, like they start doing it and I'm not kidding, their business changes. And I love yeah. the fact you're saying you lived it. I mean, you're mm -hmm. able to share this because clearly that story just shows you lived mm -hmm. it. You right. went through I'm not just process. telling you like, oh, make videos. Like I'm, I'm not like it, it works. <laughs> <laughs> I'm proof. I've stumbled. I've made a lot of mistakes. So that's why I want to, you know, do interviews like this. So I can, you know, guide you away from the mistakes that I made and get you on the track to success through video. Which I love. I was doing video um, back with the nonprofit, which was the first time I put myself out there in front of anybody because I was always the, I don't want to get in front of anybody. I don't want oh to Oh my gosh. You were like the poster child for that. Yeah, yes. And I don't like people looking at me. And so I started doing that. So by the time you started your courses, I kind of thought, well, I'm interested because I, yeah, I always want to learn and get better, Sure. Yeah. but I'm already doing you know, all this and I'm doing reels or I'm doing whatever. And I've done a lot of lives through the mm -hmm. nonprofit and now, you know, Libby and I doing mm -hmm. things through business. And I signed up for your let's get real course that I'm in the middle of now. And I have to say, I am like beyond excited and inspired. And mm -hmm. I have learned something every session I'm in. And, you know, we never know at all, but I thought I, I've just, I've learned so much. I'm excited. So that's what I'm Which is good. I mean, you're definitely not a novice. You're mm -hmm. definitely not a novice and um, you're able to share things with me. Oh, guess what I learned? I don't really do a lot of reels. Mm -hmm. um, Molly handles the I social do. media, which is why she's the one doing the course. Um, but yeah, I'm always, oh my gosh, guess what? Or did you ever think about, so this is so cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So exciting.
So and I remember, wait, I remember way back when I took Emma to, to college and I was at your house, Molly, and you brought up and it had it, it was before a course, before anything. And Aaron, you were doing tips and tricks. It was like a little Instagram reel mm-hmm. and you just did these quick t- and Molly said, how great is this? Mm-hmm. So one of those ones that you're talking about that you did it, we thought it was, early. Molly thought, I thought it was, it was stupid. Right. She showed me. But for us, it was like not common sense, right? Yeah. This was a whole new world to us. And it was just so incredibly helpful and kind of got us started. So That's thank you. Good. I love hearing that. And I think, I think we all, you know, Molly was saying you didn't want to go on camera. You know, as I mentioned before, everyone feels that way. But now more than ever on social media, if you just think how fast you're scrolling, right, as you're yeah. sitting on your couch, waiting for dinner to finish, like whatever you're doing, like we are just flying by. So if you come at it from the perspective, like I I am not scrolling through to stare at Molly and look at everything that's wrong with her and tear her apart. Molly's lucky if I stop on her content to like watch her video or see what she has to say. So, I mean, yes, there are trolls out there. I mean, I've been on TV, people say horrific things. 99% of the population won't say that. And I think we're at a level too with our Instagram pages that you're only going to get good, positive feedback from people that you know. So if you just really think about it, people aren't there to tear you apart. You're just using video as a way to get attention and get people to focus on your business or your product or your service. You know, it's just that mindset shift, which I think helps people. Yeah, I think a lot, I've heard a lot of people say that they're very scared of the criticism or trolls. And I've I've been in the habit of saying, you know what, if you're successful enough to have a troll or a hater on your page, like right. good for you. that's a level. That's like a new level, yeah. right? If, <laughs> if you have that trolls much on your page, like just thank them for the engagement because by commenting and liking, <laughs> they're just telling the algorithm that like that piece of content's doing well. So right. Right. <laughs> yeah. but more often than not, it's not gonna happen, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, really not. Yourself it's really that not. Those trolls are really not there about you. They're just there because they're doing that to anybody and everybody they can find. So yep. don't let it go to heart. So you just started this part talking about, you know, we all have are scared to get in front of the camera. So that's, mm-hmm. you know, our, our community with all the chatter we've had about TikTok reels, those kind of things. Mm-hmm. Um, it's all been, and, and I know you've heard it all in your teaching your courses and all from everybody all the different fears that we have or the um, lack of self-esteem, the uncertainty. I would love for you to take some time and give our sea chatters some, some good information they can take to build their confidence and, you know, talk about what you really think they need to have mm-hmm. as far as equipment goes, um, mm-hmm. what is necessary and what's a, eh, you can do it or not do it. And then touch base on, building confidence and your confidence in front of the camera. Cause I've, I've watched and you have a lot of good advice on that. I appreciate it. I'll start with equipment. You really, I think equipment is easy. So people who feel uncomfortable are like, I'm going to buy a bunch of equipment and then I'm magically going to make videos and they spend all this money. And guess what happens? They never make videos. So yeah. Honestly, you you really don't need anything. Like you just natural light is your best friend. So if you want to prop your phone up on a windowsill and talk to the camera that way, like that's all you need. Now, if you want to level up and for people like you who are doing lives where you're selling stuff like that, then yes, I would do the investment. Um, so I have I have a lot of different equipment. I only really use one piece of it regularly, and that's my ring light. I have it looking right here. So it's on a tripod. And it has the ring light and it also holds my phone. So it's like a tripod and a ring light. So that will just give you good lighting, even if you don't have great natural outdoor light. Another great investment is a microphone. I think people don't forgive bad audio. And in your case, you know, so if you're like in stories and you're just talking to the phone like this and it's close to you, I'm close enough that you can hear it. But Molly, right. both of you have dresses behind you. If you were to back away from the camera and you want to show like the, you know, the color of the dress, the piping, whatever's on it, then you definitely need a microphone so people can hear you. So they have cheap ones. It's called a lavalier microphone. They have cheap ones on Amazon that will plug into your phone that have a cord. And then they have one that's like $11.99 usually on average. Then they have ones that are 40 to 50 bucks that are wireless and you plug a receiver into your phone. And then that way you have room to move farther away. So I would start ring light and then microphone, you know, if you need that. 
And then as far as being confident on camera, I, I know it sounds like, you know, you hear it all the time, but it's just the more you do it, the more comfortable you feel, right? Mm -hmm. And if your Instagram stories are a great way to start it, Facebook has stories as well, because you can jump on, you can, you know, give a little story and it only lasts 24 hours. So there's no commitment. Like, even if you hate it, you know, oh, it, point. It, that's a good point. <laughs> it goes yeah. away. And even if you just get on once or twice a week and you sew behind the scenes, or this is what I'm working on today, or I just wanted to say hi today. I hope you're having a great day. That's just a stepping stone. And for some people that might be too much to talk to the camera. So at first, maybe just start with like a selfie of you and say like, this is what I'm working with today and put, you know, a list of your to-do list. But I'm really big on getting your face on camera. And here's why. I was going to ask you about that. So yeah. one of the things we hear um, from people is I just can't be on camera. I can't put my face on camera. And the response from a lot of experts or social media people is, all right, well then just do what you can. Just do, <laughs> you know, just if you have to just do text, just do text. And it sounds like you're like, you need to make that, you need to make that step. I, I had somebody to say to in a group, uh, I had somebody say in a group that um, you can't outsource your face. And that's my new expression. Cause I think <laughs> Adair Palmer said that. And I just, it's so true. Yes. So there, I'm always going to tell you to put your face on camera and it's not just because I'm in television. It's because it's proven and there is a part of the brain and I can't read, I don't have it written down in front of me, but it basically it's facial recognition. So from the moment you are born, they have brain scans and babies where that is lighting up because the newborn baby is looking for their mother's face. And then as we age, they did a study where they did brain scans and they showed them picture after picture after picture and then a face. And every time they saw a human face that lights up in your brain. So it's scientifically proven. So if you're scrolling through social media, we automatically, whether we know it or not, whether we like that face or not, we're innately going to be attracted to a human face. So if you're trying to sell and like, okay, I, I love cute dresses. So if you have a cute dress, I'm going to be attracted to that too. But if you have your face on stuff, it's just going to pull us in a little bit more. So I always try to start, and I don't do this every time. This is best practice, but as far as like story sequencing on Instagram or Facebook, if you start with your face and say, you know, if you have product, like I have new inventory today. So I would do quick, you know, I call it FTC face to camera. Hey, I hope, you know, hope you're having a great day. I want to show you the new inventory that I have. You know, I'm just going to click through the next few slides. So that's it. So just by having you as the introduction mm -hmm. to that sequencing, it pulls me in as opposed to just seeing a dress, dress, dress. Well, I just got a brilliant idea for our business, Molly. For our Did you? series. Dun! Yeah. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Because we're Thank just you. flying through content. So just by seeing uh -huh. that face, it causes me to stop. So that's why it shouldn't be scared. You don't need to go and do, you know, five minute, 10 minute videos. And if you never want to talk on Instagram reels, you know, that's okay. That's your choice. You find a level of comfort, but I would at least try to get it out there. A lot of people just point and smile if you don't want to talk. Okay. You so you would say that the face without the voice is, is okay. It's I, if you are making video content, oh. I'm all about it. You know, talking to the camera, I think is the ultimate, probably the hardest for a lot of people. Yeah. It just really depends on your industry. You know, I don't have a product to sell. So I, as a service-based industry, I have to talk to the camera. That's all I have. You know, I don't have doodads or tic tacs right, for right. people that have stuff, you know, you can do just, I call them video only reels where you're showing product and showing transitions and adding music tracks. So you have more options. Gotcha. You know, Libby, I don't know, Maria, oh. the style lister. <laughs> did you see Maria, the style lister's most recent? No, I did not. She does live sales with that um, platform she uses. Shop shops. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Last year, last week and this week, she does before her live sale, a quick reel of her setting her um, Louis Vuitton and Gucci. And oh, I did see that. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. On her display shelf, getting ready for the sale. And I thought that's brilliant. Right. You and know, it's people just love behind the scenes content. So, I mean, I could talk all day, but just look for the video opportunities during your day and setup is a really easy one. You just record it as you're setting up, speed it up and throw it up there as a reel. And you're stopping the scroll. You're getting people's attention. You're getting interest ahead of the sale. It's brilliant. 
Love it. Oh my gosh. So, all right. So what are your, what are your advice for the other, the other problem that we frequently run into is it, it's just not perfect. It's just not right. I don't know. I want it to be this and I can't quite get there. She's Which talking perfect. about me, Aaron. <laughs> no, I actually wasn't, but okay. <laughs> perfect doesn't sell. Perfection does not sell. Bottom line is we buy from people that we know, like, and trust. And I learned that myself. I think when I first started making reels, I was TV, Aaron, and I was trying to talk in my TV voice and be very formal and they were okay. But I learned as I kind of stumbled through the process that I don't need to do that on social media. It's a whole different format. So I always say I get the most engagement when my makeup's not done, when I I just look like I rolled out of bed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not, it's not pretty. Like to drive the kids (laughs) to school right? Like, like sweats. Yeah. And- I, I love the saying, but it's progress over perfection because no one's perfect, first of all, but if you're striving to achieve whatever you think is perfect, it's just going to be immobilizing to you and you're not going to do anything versus the person that just keeps throwing it out there every single day. They will be the ones seeing leaps and bounds in business. Correct. Correct. So you say, just be consistent, get it done, get something out there and just keep yes. working on it. And I think a lot, big question I get is how often should I post reels? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, that's a tough one. I'm sure you got, have you done challenges? Didn't Molly mention that? So we, ch- we haven't done it in that aspect yet because mm-hmm. we had so many beginning who hadn't done it yet that our challenge was we did a segment, um, a, a segment on your mission, mission statement, statement. Mm-hmm. creating your mission statement for your business and so we asked, challenged everybody that once you created your mission statement to create a reel of your mission statement. Mm-hmm. And so we did have some people do that, but yeah. that's the kind of challenge. We haven't done anything like do 10 in three weeks or anything. Right. <laughs> well, I'm sure next. you've seen it. There's all kinds of challenge, like do a 30 day reel challenge, put one out daily. I mean, I, I can't do that. It's for me, it's just too much. So you just have to find your own bandwidth and what's a good posting frequency for you. You know, if I can get out two to three reels a week, that's great for me. Mm-hmm. I do think though, some people imagine a post this is going to go viral and everything's going to be done. Well, if it were to go viral, that's great for about a week and then it's over. So you just, to me, consistency is more important. And if that consistency means two reels a month, you know, so be it. If it means one a week, so be it. You have to you know, be reasonable about what you can accomplish, but you just have to keep showing up in people's feed because otherwise if they don't see you, they forget about you and they don't buy from you. Mm -hmm. Very true. That's good. I love the fact that, all right, so you do auctions and you're familiar with how to, how to sell things, right? Mm -hmm. How to showcase things, how to sell things. So I want to talk a little bit about your course and how you incorporate that, because I think that's unusual, like for somebody doing a course on reels or any kind of social media to actually have the experience of, of, of selling, of knowing what it's like to showcase an item. And I feel like you really bring that. And there aren't a lot of female things. auctioneers either. Right. That's interesting. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's true. I wasn't even thinking there's, about There's a that. handful of us, but yeah, it is more of a boys club. Um, so I think yeah. s- selling on social is m- more so and my, I'm, Molly, I don't know where you are in my course, but I, I always say you have to have different types of content, right? Mm-hmm. So you have educational content, which is, I do a lot of that tips and tricks, no matter what industry you're in, I think you need content that is useful and valuable to your audience. Mm-hmm. If that's what really makes you stand out. So in your case, if it's how to style this dress three different ways with a belt, like that's educational content, then you need entertaining content because you don't want to be like the same thing every time. Right. And the entertaining content doesn't need to be all the time. It just is like sprinkled in here and there, but it's think of like the relatable content, entertaining stuff, stuff that you'd be most likely to like share with a friend. That's your entertaining content. And then you have your sales content and that can come in many different forms. And sometimes it's a direct ask. Here's my products. You know, if you want to buy it, click the link Mm -hmm. that works. But if you only do that every single time, people start to tune you out. So you need to find different ways to sell. And that's kind of, you know, what I call infusion selling. So maybe not every post or every video is like buy this, but you're showing 
you know, behind, behind that behind the scenes content that you referenced would be like infusion selling where she's showing it behind the scenes and right. your stories, you know, you're show you're going through the racks, you're showing your products. So not everything is like, get this right now. Like, you know, you're, I don't know, one of those infomercials, if you will. <laughs> so again, it's just about consistency. It's about creating desire. As you know, creating a desire for the product. It's about, you know, limited availability, which I know you guys have what one <laughs> of everything. So, yep. <laughs> so that works well. So timeliness, limited availability. And it's just, I think if you have fun and this is where it comes to putting your face on the camera, but if they really know you and you become a voice that they trust. So suddenly if you're sharing something, there's certainly a heck of more likely, a lot more likely to buy it because they like you mm -hmm. versus just a cold sell of someone that they haven't built a relationship with. And they want to like, yeah, so we real... talk a lot about 80, 20, right? 80% social, 20% selling. Is that mm -hmm. something that you kind of subscribe to? Yeah, that's a, that? that's a yeah. good percentage. I think it depends on your business. You know, I work with a lot of boutiques and every single one of their posts mm -hmm. is selling basically. Mm -hmm. So yeah. with them, we try to like infiltrate like a few other posts, you know, just to jazz it up or they'll do quotes and stuff like that. So it just really depends what you're doing, but it all comes down to, I think, especially since COVID it's relationship based marketing. You know, mm -hmm. I think it's on social media, it's who you're buying from knowing that person. Even if you look at the big brands, they're trying to become more personable and showing behind the scenes. Like we're seeing a major shift across the board. Right. Right. Um, <clears throat> that's the thing I, I always get on my soapbox about being authentic. Mm -hmm. And that is to me, the biggest thing, if you're going to put your face out there, be you. Like you were talking about when you had your, and you are you, I mean, being in front of the TV is, as as a broadcast. I mean, you've been doing that. You did weather, mm -hmm. you do low cut weather way back when low country mm -hmm. live now. So that still was part of authentic you, but it wasn't relaxed you. It was your work you, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I, I think that is the biggest to me. One of the most important things is be yourself, be yourself. Right. So, and there's two levels, you know, you strive to be yourself and find how you want to present yourself on camera, mm -hmm. because that's another thing you have to decide. You don't have to put everything out there for the world to see it. Right. So when you're making your videos or creating your, your content, you can decide, I'm not saying not be yourself. You're still authentic, but you decide what slivers of yourself that you want to you know, put out there. Sure. But then the other half of the equation is who are you trying to attract? And Molly knows this when you go through my course. I always say everyone, if you look at your Instagram page or your Facebook page as a TV channel, you know, what kind of channel are you and who do you want to watch? And we get very specific because if you have a better idea of who you're wanting to attract right down to like who her name is, what her age is, how much money she has, you know, how many kids she has, all that stuff. It just makes it easier because I mean, it's an old saying, but you're not selling to everyone because yeah. then you're selling to no one. And so that, I'm very specific. Like I know exactly who I'm trying to attract and everyone gets afraid to like narrow it down. But I'm telling you once, especially on video, once you can imagine that person that you're talking to, instead of just looking at an empty camera lens, if you're imagining that person, it changes the way you speak. It changes the language you use. It changes your body language. It just makes you more comfortable and more relatable. And Aaron just did an ad for this week's podcast without even knowing it. We just I didn't did know that. <laughs> without even knowing it. We do, we've do. we talked about the ideal customer in the past mm -hmm. and we did an, uh, an episode because Libby and I did our ideal customer for mm -hmm. our business, both Concha Consignment and C Chats mm -hmm. back in the fall and created our ideal customer and she has a name and we know where she lives and how many yep. kids she has. And we, when we make decisions for what we're posting, we always say, well, what would Chrissy think? Yeah. Is Chrissy when we're making reels, we think, what this? would Chrissy like? <laughs> yeah. So it's just, it's yeah. A hundred percent. It's it's the best litmus test. Cause I'll find myself it may be getting too technical. Like I'm going to do this great how to, and I'm like, no, 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 no. Like this is too much. This is not what she wants. Right. So it's just really good gauge as to what type of content you're putting out there. And that is why, friends, in last week's episode, I said, you must, all caps, underline, exclamation, create your ideal customer. Mm -hmm. You must. We don't take a hard line on much, but that is something we absolutely that's, that's take a hard, a hard line, line on. <laughs> Add your mission statement and then yeah. learning more from Aaron so you can get yourself mm -hmm. out there. 
It's yeah. important. It's important. So tell us where we can, everybody can find you. Uh, well, if you, my last name is Kinzel, which is hard to spell. So if you just go to Instagram, if you search Aaron Video Coach, it should come up. My handle is at Aaron Kinzel. It's K I E N Z L E. Mm-hmm. An easier way is if you go to AaronOnCamera.com. When you go there, I have a freebie, which is your beginner guide to reels. So that will, they're going to want more. Anything, Our chatters are going to want more. Yes. yes. If you've never more posted more. anything, you can get the beginner's guide. And then you mm-hmm. can also find my course, Let's Get Real on there. And that's what Molly's going through. And this is like, this is my baby. <laughs> Molly knows yes. this has, it took me months to really, cause video can be overwhelming as we know, as we've talked. So I really mm-hmm. tried to present it in a way that is clear and understandable and achievable because I don't want you to go through this and not make real. So we talk about your ideal customer. We make a Finstagram. Molly, yes. Molly knows about this. I have a Finstagram. It's not you. It's a I didn't even know what one was until Molly told me last oh, week. Don't it's tell. Brilliant. They got to sign up to know. Yes. <laughs> but then we go through all the different kinds of reels. Because if you don't want to talk to the camera, as I said, you don't have to. I would love if you did, but you don't have to. There's all ty- types of different reels that you can make. And then I have a very strategic, I call it my scroll stopping system as to, you know, because it's not just posting one reel and walking away. It's the whole strategy when you post what you want the reel to do for you, what the goal of it, the content, et cetera. So I think when you come out, you're a real rock star. And I want to plug this in a real rock star. I like that (laughs) rock star. And that's R-E-E-L friends. R-E-E-L rock star. Um, (laughs) I want to plug in there too, because we all have talked about in our group and our community, how busy we are and fitting this Mm -hmm. in and fitting that in. One of the things that I absolutely love about Aaron's course is everything is so well organized and in bite-sized pieces. Mm -hmm. So you can do bite-size, 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 do a little here. You got to go take the kids to school. Mm -hmm. You work for a while and you take your lunch break. You do a little here. It's so, it's so user-friendly as far as a course goes for people with busy schedules, just to take little bite-sized pieces along. That's what you I, get from somebody who's that. walked the walk right? and talked the talk. Right? You get right. a real rock star. Yeah. Right. And I, I worked hard to do that, Molly, because I, I've taken courses where it's, you log on like an hour long training. I don't have time for that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I tried to make them, you know, short and achievable and, well, you know, kudos to you. Wonderful. You did a fantastic job because I was worried when I signed up, like, what am I committing to? I got so much on my plate right now mm-hmm. da, 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 and it has been, I don't, I don't go, oh gosh, okay. I got to cut out an hour of my time because I haven't mm-hmm. done it. Mm-hmm. I can just go, oh wait, while I'm doing this, let me do, let me do this five yeah, minutes. Pop on. This t- yeah. It's great. I always say that you are only one video away from changing your business like because that. it's true. We, you know, we talk about the potential to go to, to viral and it's very slim to do that, but you never know. You could post something and it could take off and you could get hundreds of new followers. You could post that one video that resonates with someone and you land a big new client. You could post that one video that gets shared and it connects you with someone else. I've just seen it so frequently with my students that it's amazing that they're like, I, I did this reel and look what happened. I'm like, I know I it. <laughs> it's amazing what you can do. I so I am really so looking exciting. forward to implementing this stuff in our business. I mean, just yeah. a year ago, we started doing video and the changes in our business have been immense and the connections have been so I'm excited to take it up we're taking it up a level now and you know you have to I never want to be negative but businesses that aren't using video your stuff just is not going to be seen yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it's true. Instagram and Facebook are their own, they're both owned by Facebook. They flat out and said that they're pushing video content. Like it's just, and no matter what the platform, because it's not going to be Instagram anymore. It's not going to be TikTok. We all know we'll move on to something else, but what mm-hmm. you're just learning is video skills. It's marketing is what you're learning. And that transcends to whatever future platforms we might be on. Who knows? Great. I love it. Thank well, you. Aaron, I can't thank you enough for taking time out of your busy, busy schedule with all the hats you wear and joining us to give our sea chatters a taste of what you know. And I do want to say, if you're interested in Let's Get Real, you can always message me if you have any questions, but if you use the code VIC, you get a discount. 
just for you and guys. We will be linking so don't that like... up in the show notes. If that's <laughs> okay with you, notes. we will be sharing it in our show <laughs> yes. notes. Yes. Right. yes. But, we'll link it all up. Ladies, so Let's pleasant. So there. lovely talking to you. <laughs> thank, yeah, you. thank you. Thank right. you so much, Erin. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Okay. That was fun. So cool. Another- I, I'm like ready to get to work. Like I don't even want to record this outro. I'm going to be honest with you guys. Like <laughs> this is like torture because I make a you're ready to go. Ready. I'm, I'm real. Off. I'm real ready. I'm real ready. Um, yeah, so much fun. I just adore her. I love everything she's about. And I love that she is always, and I meant to say this on the episode, one of the things that I love about her and the four hats that she wears in life, um, less focused on the children because I don't spend family time with her, but I have spent time with her and her other hats. She is always so um, supportive. She's such an amazing cheerleader and just real in the R-E-L sense. She's a real person and she just, she wants everybody to succeed. And whatever. How about the fact that she's an auctioneer? auctioneer. I wasn't even thinking about what a male dominated uh, profession that is. Yeah. It was never even occurred to me, but now that I'm thinking about it, wow. Yeah. And that she, can't be easy. She's phenomenal. Not only was she phenomenal helping me get ready for it, like all the things she helped me get ready for the auction I did for that nonprofit, but running the auction and getting up there in front of people. I mean, she's phenomenal. She's phenomenal. But what I love about her is it's natural. You don't feel like, I mean, she's just, she's a real, she's, she's for real y'all. She's living in her gifts. She's living in her She's gifts. living in her gifts and she's providing service through uh, helping people with reels and helping small business. And I just love to meet somebody that is living in their gifts. Yeah. And, and I'm so glad she was willing to share her time with us and, and be a part of our C Chats community. Speaking of community, what we got going Ooh, on over there? Oh yeah. We've been chatting about our favorite parts of reselling, our least favorite parts of reselling, which is always kind of fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because different people have very, like some people love to ship. Some people hate to ship. Yep. I'm not mentioning any names. Love uh, <laughs> photography. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So it's always kind of fun to see that and see who likes what. And maybe you'll get some like uh, little virtual assistant things going on of that. Uh-huh. Like I love to list. I love to list. Most people don't love to list. They love to source. So just kind of fun. Yeah. Just kind of fun. Um, yeah. So, and I wanted to share this with you all. Okay. So uh, Christina from the Red Dresser put this post in the community and I just wanted to share it with you because it, it got me a little choked up. Not going to lie. All right. all right. She says, wanted to give everyone an update on my first month of owning the Red Dresser. So she bought the Red Dresser. She bought a consignment business. And she is going to, she said, I am going to say it was a successful month. Yay. Using profit first, I was able to pay myself and pay all my bills. I ended the month with, and I won't use the exact number in sales, which it was a fairly impressive number. Uh, It was, and still is so much fun getting to know all of my customers and consigners. It was a learning curve for me. But I got through it and I added a small but growing men's section to my show floor, which has been received with so much enthusiasm from the whole community. And a huge thank you to the ladies of Consignment Chats community for teaching me everything I know about consignment. I have been listening to your podcast since November 2021. Don't know if I would have learned half of what I did without you. Thanks. I love that. Thank you so much. Thanks. It is so, it's what? so inspiring and motivating to see people out there crushing it. And when she took the time to say that it was even, yeah, even better. Yeah. Even Do better. you remember where she's located? She's in Canada. Canada. Okay. So we got to make that trip. We got, so don't ask me where in Canada. I'm sorry. I'm not, it's escaping me right now, trip, but I do know, you know, we want to start meeting our sea chatters in person more. So it's time. It's time for that to happen. A Canadian yeah. trip sometime soon. We yeah. got several over there. We can go visit that we love. Yeah. So if you're not part of the community, come on over to Facebook. You can visit us at consignmentchats.com and link right up to our community on Facebook where we have more in-depth discussions and we announce our roundtable episode, our roundtable episodes. Mm-hmm. And 
we are providing another service so that we can bring more to you. Uh, we opened a Patreonic Patreon, which I will link up here in the notes. So there are different tiers. The minimum one is uh, if you need just a little more and it helps us keep the lights on. So it is $5 a month for yeah. Patreon and you get an extra like a networking session where we go more into depth on a more personal level of the topics. And then there are tiers all the way up to personal uh, monthly consulting calls with us. Yes. So yes. you asked, we provide it. This allows us to do it and serve you better while not taking too much away from you know, we are running a business right. <laughs> other than C-Chat. So uh, yeah, <laughs> we're, we're very excited to be able to uh, bring that to you. So check it out, see if it might suit your needs and see if we can serve you in that way. So yeah. love it. Don't forget, subscribe, like all those good, all that good stuff, all that good stuff, all, all that right. good stuff. Yep. Do it, share. I'm going to say it again. I say it all the time. Share with your other reselling friends especially your consignment friends, because we know they are very busy and don't generally look up from work. If yeah. they are anything like I was for many, many years that I hadn't even watched a YouTube video. And let's give them the support and fun of our community. Yes. Right. Yes. All they right. need it. Believe me. I wish I had us nine years ago. Oh, and y'all <laughs> in the Patreon that Libby was talking about, one of the things in there is merch. We're coming up with some new merch. So get ready. Oh, Molly's Here's having way too much fun with the merch. Oh I my am. gosh. Her I baby. Am. We know I how am. good Molly is at branding and graphic design. So she is using those skills to develop some awesome merch that I am just, I'm excited for, honestly. <laughs> and I say that because I'm getting ready to cheer you goodbye for the Ooh. day. And I don't have my mug, Ooh. but we're going to get some new ones. So until next week, Libby. Cheers. Thanks for joining Libby and Molly, the ladies of Consignment Chats, as we build a resourceful community of collaborative resellers. Find all the ways to connect with us at consignmentchats.com. Episodes are available on YouTube and anywhere you get your podcasts. In addition, you can find us on Facebook in our Consignment Chats community. Until next time.